Welcome back to the Haas Online Training Series. In this session, we're going to take a look at creating a trade bot using the container method within the visual editor. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. To begin, all we have to do is hover over here to the left and click Visual Editor. After that, we're going to create a new script and we're going to change this to trade bot script. And let's go ahead and just give this a name. In this case, I'm just going to use test trade or test bot script. We're going to hit new. Now, what's going to happen is, is you're going to get this default layout, which we'll explain here in a second, after the data is loaded. So before we get started, what we want to make sure to do is to set the account we want to use in the market. In this case, I'm using my simulated Deribit account on BTC Perpetual. And we want to make sure that our trade amount is the minimum requirement. So in this case, I need 10 contracts to begin doing this. So let's go ahead, let's just go over a quick idea of what these containers are and what they mean. So the first one you'll see here is the trade bot container. This is actually, for those who are familiar, it's a do signal. This is basically a all-in-one bot that is in charge of managing the, diff the indicator safeties and insurances and figuring out which signal to execute from them. Attach them to safety container. And the safety container takes in all safety signals and then figures out if there's a signal to be sent. And if it does, if there is, it will go ahead and send that to the trade bot container to be um, processed. Now you'll notice that the indicator container is different from the safety container. This is because the indicator container gives us a few more outputs. In this case, all signals, unanimous signal and consensus signal. For now, we're gonna focus on the unanimous signal, which means that in order for a long or short to happen, all bots must agree. So in order to go long, if we're using three indicators, all three indicators need to say we're going long. And then you'll notice consensus signal. We'll talk about more about that in another video, but basically if you're familiar with um, how consensus signals work, you know, if there's three signals and two agree, then the signal executes, then you might have an idea of how this already works. But don't worry, we'll definitely cover this. And then finally, we have the insurance container. The insurance container works just like the safety container. It takes a signal, uh, it takes all the insurance signals and then determines if one needs to be executed and then sends that over to the trade bot container to be executed. Let's start by creating a, let's go with an easy moving average. And what I mean by that is if we right click here in the indicator, we have by default all these uh, indicators prefixed with easy. And these are indicators that we've created uh, special logic to them. And basically what it does is it you will remove the need to put individual inputs, etc. All It's all built in and what will happen is, is any settings that are required will immediately be showing up in the script settings off to the left. So let's go ahead, let's use EasyMA. And you'll notice that all it takes is a chart index, a name, and an interval. Now chart index, if we look at our chart, basically says where something should go. So if we want something to go under here, we'll use uh, positive numbers. If we want to go up here, we use negative numbers. So if we go ahead and we put this chart index minus one, or in this case, let's try minus two. Let's give it a name. And we hit save. Then we run a little quick back test here. You'll see that the negative numbers are moving up here. But as most imagine, we'd want the moving averages to be on the chart itself. So let's go ahead and set this to zero and let's give it a better name. Let's just use this easy MA uh, one. That way it's a unique identifier. One of the important things to note is that if you have multiple of the same indicator, you, you need to give them unique names or else things will get very confusing inside the settings here. So let's go ahead and hit save here and then run the test again. And we will see the moving averages now on the chart itself. Now immediately you'll notice that we have trade execution. So you can see the red and green dots on the on the chart where trades are executed. And then you can also see the current signals being generated at the top of the chart. And then as I mentioned before, the really nice part about the easy indicators is that the settings for them immediately get added here on the left. So you see this is easy MA, easy MA1, which is this one. And we can go ahead and change how things work. Like if we want the long, uh, moving average to be WMA, so on and so forth, or the links for them. Now, the next thing is, is it's not just limited to that. So let's say we could always add another indicator. So let's just go ahead and drag that up, right click, and let's add an RSI, easy RSI, drag that down. In this case though, we want this has a 
let's do plus one. So we want it below the chart and we'll just name this easy RSI one. And as before, we just hit save and run a quick back test, which will update everything. And you'll notice immediately we now have the RSI values be mapped. Now remember, it's now running consensus, so we don't really see too many trades happening. Or not consensus, I apologize. It's now running in unanimous mode. So unless both the moving average and the RSI agree, then a trade will be executed. So to do this, we will need to modify something. So let's make our cell level 65. Let's go ahead and set that in there. Hit save, run it again, and let's see if we can get some trades to be forced in. And there you go, we got a sell signal there. It looks like we're still missing some buys around here somewhere, but you hopefully get the idea. This is just an example of how we can use another one. So let's go ahead and move on. Let's talk about safeties. Safeties are the same idea. We have a, quite a bit of safeties built in. Now you'll notice these don't have easy attached to them because they do require us to define certain aspects of them. But in this case, let's go ahead and create a stop loss. And this will be a, a stop loss and you'll notice that it needs a percentage. So let's go ahead and right click here, hit input. And this input field is now here. So let's go ahead and give it a name. So in this case, I'm just gonna do stop loss percentage and I'm gonna give it default value of let's say 2%. So we just put the positive number there and hit save. And you'll notice that once it's saved, we get our stop loss percentage uh, input field here. And then we can start um, moving forward with that. So we hit back test. And of course, the back test will then run and give us more information. Finally, let's go ahead and add an insurance container or an insurance to our container. And let's do the overcome fee cost. Now, by default, overcome fee cost doesn't need anything. And as always, you can hover over the little eye in the right hand corner to get information on what other values you can put in there. But important to note, in order for overcome fee cost means the bot can never sell for a loss. And I'm saying this in this video just to kind of remind people that this isn't a end all be all. It does prevent bots from ever selling at a loss. So let's go ahead, hit save, run another back test here. Okay, it says back test completed. I know we haven't seen any trades, so let's go ahead and open that up. As with almost every bot or screen within the Haas Online interface, we can go ahead and click the back test remote and then click something like trades. And you'll notice that we only went short once and the bot's still short. And this is, is for a number of reasons. It could be because you know our, our easy RSI is not set correctly. So let's go ahead, let's just remove that to give you an example. Move it back down here to make it look nice and pretty. Let's go ahead and run a four day back test on this. And then we can hit trades and let's see what happened. And now you can see that we have a, a list of trades, um, good and bad, as expected with any bot. And that's really what we need to start creating bots using the container setup. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join us on Discord where myself or one of our support staff can assist you in anything you might, any questions you might have. And of course, please like and subscribe if you like these videos. And as always, until next time.